Hey, welcome everybody. This is Coach Kurt Johnson and Kay Curtis, the Curtis and Curtis Show, coming at you for e-commerce business school weekly race to Minnesota. And we are so glad that you are here. So come on in. The water's fine. If you have questions as we move along, we encourage you to write them down there. We're just so privileged here to travel with this tribe and with this pack to have some uh uh, checkups from the neck up, if you will. So, Kay, I'm going to go ahead and rearrange the slides here after we've said hello. Why don't you greet everybody, and I'm going to rearrange the screen a little bit then. All right. Hi, everybody. Hope you're having a good day. Hope you're working on your mindset and your thinking and that it's helping you move forward in your business. That'll be awesome. All right. So. Let's go ahead. I'm going to rearrange the screen here a little bit. Hey, Lisa. Let us know if sound and video and all that's coming through. If you would, please, that would be great. We are now on the race to Minnesota in July. There's actually an event, and a lot of people are going to race there, are going to get there, are going to drive there. Can you share a little bit about that? Um, but whether you can come actually physically there or not, flying in, driving in, riding in, walking in, whatever the case might be, it's right next to the Mall of America. We want you tracking with us and with this tribe going into this event. Thank you, Debbie. Awesome. Appreciate that. So looks like all systems are go K. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and jump. Well, I'll leave it on slide one and you go ahead and take her away. Thank you for taking the time to help us with our um, uh, positive mental attitude and outlook towards the race to Minnesota. Okie doke. Well, this is, we can go ahead and flip to uh, slide two if you want, Kurt. Okay. <clears throat> this is just a recap of our race to Minnesota. This is our weekly meetup. This is week three. We're um, at 12 p.m. Central. I'm in Eastern, so I was about to say one o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> I am too. Anyway, yeah. So we're going to go through these first few slides. If this is your first time joining us, we're glad you're here. And we want to just kind of briefly give you a real quick overview of the race to Minnesota. If you want details on it, you can go back and listen to previous calls. Um, go to the next slide, Kurt. Okay. Um, we want to make sure that everyone know everyone can participate. It doesn't matter which EBS program you're implementing, and it doesn't matter if you are physically coming to Minnesota. The purpose of these challenges within our community is to help you build your business. And we have found in the past over several years that these challenges do work. People that participate and implement actually propel their business forward in a lot more accelerated rate. Next slide. <clears throat> so if you're, if you're an EBS member, whether, it's, whether you have our free membership or whether you've purchased one of our courses, you're good to go. There's nothing else that you have to do to become involved. If you're not an EBS member, we would love for you to participate in our Race to Minnesota go to www.joinebs.com to get your free membership and that gets you on the track to be able to move. All right, next slide. So there's four action steps that you need to participate in. Number one is that you post a map in the EBS Facebook group page and that's a page that you have to join so you do have to be a member to join that group page. It is a closed group. You will go to the unit um, on the side there's a little tab that says unit you click on that you scroll down to race to minnesota and there's two posts there where you can post a map and basically we just want you to take a screenshot of a google map from your home to minnesota number two you post a declaration of intent again this is on the ebs facebook group page in the race to minnesota unit post there is a specific post for declaration of intent and the same with posting a strategic plan for how you're going to accomplish your declaration of intent. So basically your declaration of intent, whether you go to Minnesota or not, is what do you want to accomplish in your business before July 19th? And then your strategy plan is how you're going to do that. What are the steps that you're going to take to make that happen? And then as a member of the community, you have access to the e-commerce business school back office. And in there we have a function called the daily tracker. And so you will report daily using the end of day tracker in the ABS back office. And as you, the whole purpose of that is this accountability. When you know you have to report in at the end of the day, you tend to get up off your butt and get something done. And so it's a good habit to get into. One of our members, Sharon Stafford, who is also participating in this, she has been posting daily for, I don't know how many years, Kurt. <laughs> 
<laughs> she's really good. Yes, she <laughs> is. Accountability. Um, and so it's just a habit that you get into. We are, um, and then the next slide, Kurt. Then we'd like for you to share your journey. Um, again, you'll do this in the Facebook group and the page if you like. Um, and there is a specific post in the unit on the group page. And it can be anything from taking pictures of your haul that you scanned. It can be a screenshot of your sales for the month or the week. Um, these are all pictures from my first race to Minnesota, different things that I shared on my journey. Um, my goal was to do $10,000 in sales. I started in July before our September 18th um, meeting. And you'll see at the bottom that I busted that goal at 15,000 by the time we went. All right, the next page. This helps you understand how to get to the unit page. So this is in the EBS closed group page. Again, you have to be a member of EBS to get access to this page. You go to the, the e-commerce business Facebook group page. Over here on the side, you see units, and then you scroll down to Race to Minnesota, and you'll see that there's all these, the Race to Minnesota opening day, that's where you post your map. The declaration of intent is where you post your DOI. Your strategy plan, you post in the right of strategy post, and then share your journey is where you share your accomplishments as you're going along. And that enables us to rejoice with you and get excited about you, and it also helps motivate other people that aren't participating. Okay, next one is just the e on the EBS Facebook page. It's easy to post your journey. You don't have to go to any units or anything. You just go create a post and post it. So um, we would like you to post in both places if you feel so inclined so that we can motivate people in every area of our business. Next. And you can win prizes. This was, we try to make this fun. This is, um, this is business, but business needs to be fun. And that's why we do a lot of the things that we do. We pick a weekly winner, which will be announced at our weekly meet Wednesday meetups. And there will be one announced in just a few minutes. And then every three weeks, we're gonna have a consistency winner. So a weekly winner, um, you, well, well, and then we have a grand prize winner. So if you go to the next slide, this is our weekly prize. You can pick from either an e-commerce business school mug or an e-commerce business school journal to jot down whatever you want. It can be a place where you record your goals. You can turn it into a gratitude journal of things that you're grateful for every day. You can use it for anything that you want to accomplish in your business, Any anything at all. It's kind of a great little notebook to have on hand. In order to qualify for the weekly prizes, okay, you must post your map, your DOI, and your summary plan on the Facebook group. Now, you only need to do that once, but you do need to do all three. And then for the current week, so this would be for today, it would have been from last um, Wednesday through yesterday, through Tuesday. You need to post daily in the, in the week ending back office daily tracker. Now I am, I tend to be a little lenient. And so I will give you one day grace in a week, but that's all. <laughs> so I realize that we all can't be perfect all the time. So oh, I'm willing to- But, but, but Kay, Kay, come on, you and I are, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> so I am giving you a little bit of grace uh, uh, for the weekly meetups and um, that you can skip a day. If, I mean, if something just happens and you totally space it or whatever, that happens. So you do get one grace day a week that, and I will call you in. So we're getting ready to announce our winner for this week. Is oh, drum roll, drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. All right, that's fine. There, there's my drum roll. Okay. Here we go. One, two, three. Candida Lillard, and I had to pull this picture of her modeling one of her t-shirts from her POD store. It was so cute. I love her smile. She was one of my first coaching clients. Um, Amber Geese was number one and Candida was number two, and um, they have both done phenomenal. So congratulations, Candida. And if you go to the next slide, Kurt, you can claim your prize by emailing support. And the easiest way to do that is just to go to the EBS back office and you see that little support button in the bottom right hand corner. Just click on that and send an email to support and tell them whether you want the mug or the journal. Okay, then let's go to the next slide. Um, and everyone give kudos to Candida in the comments. You know, she worked hard. She's report, reported every day. She's working really hard to bust her business and that's awesome. So the Race to Minnesota Consistency Prize is in addition to the weekly winner, 
every three weeks, everyone who has posted their map DOI or summary plan, again, you only have to do that once, and posted daily for the three week block, everybody wins. So while the weekly winner, I draw names out of a hat, the consistency winner, because it requires more effort on your part, we're rewarding everybody that does it. So you will get a $25 Amazon gift card and these yummy brownies in the mail. Um, and yes, there can be, so there can be more than one consistency winner. And let's go to the next one. Our grand prize winner, which will be announced at the event, is that you will get a $100 Amazon gift card. And again, the requirements for this are the map, DOI, and summary plan in the Facebook group page. The person has the best daily reporting accountability in the EBS back office tracker. So again, we're giving you a little bit of grace, you know, if you didn't, uh, so that if you missed a day, you don't have to feel like you're out of the running. And the third is that you exceed, well, I don't know what that first word's supposed to be. That's, I gotta fix that. Oh, hits. It's supposed to be hits, exceeds, or comes closest to achieving your DOI that you posted in Facebook. So if you weren't very specific in Facebook, you may want to go back and adjust your DOI. And as I was going through getting things ready to do the drawing this week, there's a lot of you that have posted one or two of the three, not all three. So you're out. Go back and get that cleaned up. You only have to do it one time. You know, get it in. It's not tough, you know. And, and then start working on the habit of posting daily. So that's a, a great thing. So anyway, that's exciting. Now, every week, we're doing a crazy question of the week. Just to make, again, this is what makes this fun. So let's go to the next slide. So this week, our goofy question of the week is, what is your favorite candy bar? And I want you know, Oh, I Heath. I knew how to turn my husband's phone off. <laughs> Heath. <laughs> Heath bars right there in the middle. My son is named Heath when we grew up, okay? And, he, <laughs> and, and he, when, when he was like four years old, people asked him what his name is. He's saying Heathy bar. So anyway, yeah, we love Heath bars. <laughs> <laughs> I had a hard time. I was looking at this picture and thinking, okay, I like Reese's. I like Kit Kats. I like Snickers. <laughs> Let's see. I was having a hard time deciding myself. Um, paydays I like. I love nuts. So, you know. Anyway, baby roots are good. <laughs> is, that, is, that anyway. why you, is that why you like me? You like nuts? Yeah. <laughs> well, it takes one to know one, right? Yeah, yeah that's for sure. <laughs> okay, so what do we got? Have people throwing their candy bars in? Let's see. Come on, guys. I'm going to look. There's a little bit of a leg time when I'm watching this. Beth yeah. likes Snickers. Kathy likes Butterfingers. Come on, the rest of you. Go ahead and throw those in there. That's awesome. If you're watching after the fact, go ahead and put your comments in there so we can go back and look and see what you like. That's always fun. Dolores likes Butterfingers. Debbie <laughs> likes Kit Kats. <laughs> ah. All right. And Tammy Here likes Reese's. Someone, yeah. someone on staff likes Hershey's white chocolate. <laughs> 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 All right. Okie doke. So let's go get into the meat of today. So that kind of gives you an overview of what the program is. If you haven't joined us yet, we would love for you to, again, go back to the beginning of this presentation to see how to make that happen, or go back to previous recordings of our Facebook Lives um, earlier, the, and that we'll explain in a lot more detail of the different things that we're doing. Let's go to the next slide. So now we're gonna start the real reason for this call, which is mindset training. This is something that is really, really important to me. And it is something that's played a powerful impact in my life. It's something I've studied for years. I was trained as an energy therapist probably, oh, I don't wanna say how long ago it was, but we're probably pushing 20 years ago. And, um, but I've always looked at alternative methods of healing and also of getting my life together. And so, we're talking over the next few weeks about the various laws that govern the way we think and the, and what happens in our life along the law of attraction and everything and how important it is to understand these laws because they're in effect. We talked last week about the um, understanding law, the, that it's universal and it applies whether you know it and understand it or like it or not. So today, go to the next slide. Today, we're actually gonna talk specifically about the law of thought in our journey of joy to success and abundance. 
And we've talked a lot over the last few weeks, you know, about have positive thinking and all that. So I was trying to think of doing a, a little twist, a different twist on um, this concept and present a couple of new ideas that you may or may not be familiar with. But before we get into that, let's go to the next slide. As we talk about the laws of thought and the success and abundance, our first challenge is to become very aware of our thoughts. Now, the beauty of this is it doesn't require any additional time. You just have to really be honest with yourself and assess, you know, so are your th thoughts more negative or positive? Be honest with yourself. It doesn't do any good to say, oh yeah, I'm more positive, but then you're always complaining about stuff. Or when something happens, you always react negatively before you react positively. It's not, it, that's kind of human nature to do that. This, the key is how fast do you recognize that negative thought and nix it? Flip it to a positive, turn it around and make it a positive thing. And we've talked about that in some previous calls that you can go back and listen to. Let's go to the next one. It's important to understand that our minds are like a fertile field, okay? And we're the ones that plant the seeds and we choose the seeds that we plant. Next slide. The ground doesn't care. So our, this fertile field does not care what we plant. Whatever we plant, it will help grow. If we plant good seeds or positive thoughts, it will nourish the seeds and give us good plants or positive results. If we plant negative thoughts, we'll grow poison. And while it might look pretty, negative results or weeds can overtake the good plants really fast. A quote from The Secret of a Man Think is by Adam Mortimer and James Allen. It's one of my favorite books on mindset. If no useful seeds are put into it, then an abundance of useless weed seeds will fall therein and will continue to put reproduce their kind. So if you aren't actively planting good seeds and you're just leaving this vacant Field, fertile field, you think it's dormant. It's not. I mean, just think in nature. If a field just stays, you know, if the farmer plows up the field and then does nothing, it doesn't take long before something is growing there. The field will not stay dormant, okay? Whether birds blow seed, whether wind blows seed, doesn't matter, but it's now chaos and out of control because you haven't planted seeds to take up the space and so st other stuff's going to grow. All right, let's go to the next one. Um, this is another quote from the book, As a Man, The Secrets of As a Man Thinking. As the plant springs from and could not be without the seed, so every act of a man springs from the hidden seeds of thought and could not have appeared without them. This applies, and this is what I want you to really pay attention to. This applies equally to those acts called spontaneous or unpremeditated as to those which are deliberately executed. So every action that happens, whether you think it's spontaneous or not, is resulting from some kind of thought seed that you planted at some time. All right, let's go to the next one. So is it time for a change? You need to be thinking about, you know, what's going on in your life and if you're happy with it. Are you ready to change your negative mindset if you tend to go that way into a new one? Now, recognize changing the way we think is not easy. There's so much, we're bombarded with so much information and so much of it is negative and we're emotional beings and so we tend to react emotionally to the stimulus that comes at us to get in control of that isn't always easy but it's worth the effort okay let's go to the next one another favorite uh, topic and some of you may be familiar with Bob Proctor a quote from this book is you do have control over your life you have chosen to be where you are now now you may not like it but it's law what where you are is because of choices you've made this is good news believe me you may not like where you are now but now you know that you have the power to change it 
you take responsibility. You're not putting it off that you're in the situation you're in because of the environment, because of something your parents did, because of what other people did, because of your, you, you quit the excuses. You don't put that out there. You understand that your thoughts have brought you to where you are and you're in control of that. And so if you want to change that, then you have to change the way you're thinking. Next one. Now, an easy way to do this, this is another quote from The Secrets, you can discover what you are bringing into your life by tuning in to your emotions. Like I said earlier, we're emotional beings. Pay attention to the emotions that happen in your reactions. Your emotions will reveal what you truly believe subconsciously and will activate the unseen forces that bring what you desire into existence. So one way to help get control of your thoughts is to really pay attention to the emotional response that you have to different things and analyze, is it a positive or negative? And what can you do to, if it's negative, what can you do to turn it around? <clears throat> Next slide. Now, these are just a few more quick quotes from this book that I just, like I said, as I read through it, I think, oh, that would be good for this. That would be good for this. And so I'm just pulling them in. By the time we're done, you may have read the whole book with me. <laughs> but men don't attract that what they want, but that which, which they are. And man has to but put himself, put, man has but to right himself to find that the universe is right. And during the process of putting himself right, he will find that as he alters his thoughts towards things and other people, that things and other people will alter towards them. Now that's, if you're in, if you've got, I, I've seen this happen. Um, actually it happened in my, my husband grew up in a very dysfunctional family. There was a lot of yelling and screaming and fighting um, that when he was growing up. I did not grow up in that kind of environment. And when we got married, the only way he knew how to do things was to pick a fight. And I wouldn't bait. He couldn't bait me. My feeling is there's no point just trying to discuss anything in anger because you're going to say or do something that you'll regret later. And once you say it, you can't take it back. Even though you may apologize and be sorry or whatever, that that negative energy, you know, it's hard to overcome that. And so I wouldn't bait. And um, he would try to push my buttons to get me to fight because that's all he knew. And I wouldn't take the bait because that's not what I knew. And over time, he, know, he hasn't done that for years, but he doesn't do it anymore. And so because I controlled how I responded, I was able to affect a positive change in my husband. And I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to beat him up. I didn't have to say, do you know how stupid that is that you do that? I didn't have to point that out. All I had to do was be in control of what I was doing. And in the process of doing that, in order for him to continue to relate, he wanted to continue to dance. I've heard it say, you know, that when you change the dance step, they're either gonna follow you or you're gonna break the dance. And so that's what's gonna happen in your life as you start getting control of your thoughts is the people that aren't going to serve you in a positive way will naturally fall out of your life because the dance can't, you can't stay in the dance step. And so that's really an important thing. Now, I also love Albert Einstein. He has some great stuff. And go, let's go to the next slide. Now, this is something that is really important when you're building a business, because in building a business, there is always, always, always going to be problems. Things are going to come up. It will never be smooth. That's just the nature of building a business. There's all these various factors that you don't have control over. Things are always changing. And Albert Einstein said that no problem can be solved from the same level of consciousness that created it. Remember problems and stumbling blocks that come in our way are nothing more than learning opportunities for us to learn lessons to become better. And so by becoming better, we solved the problem, but we didn't, by becoming better, we've now raised the level of our consciousness above where it was before when we created the problem. And so, and then this is the other thing. And I, you know, these people that constantly, 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 let's go to the next one. How many people do you know do the same thing over and over and over again and expect a different result? Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. If you don't like the results, you got to change something. Something has to change and it needs to start in your head. Okay. 
Next slide. Now, when you realize that you are the master of your circumstances, all things are possible. And there is no need for negativity. Like I said, we're always putting a positive spin. So when issues come up, when challenges come up, when problems come up, instead of complaining and, and reacting negatively, our thought needs to be, okay, I'm supposed to learn something from this. So what is it I'm supposed to learn? Once I learn the lesson, there's no reason for that problem to keep coming. And so if it keeps coming, then you haven't learned the lesson yet. You haven't asked the right question. Now, let's go on. Next one. So tips and tricks. <laughs> I've been reading and studying about this for a long time, and I've discovered some easy to implement tricks that I've picked up along the way that I'd like to share with you. And is it something that you would be interested in seeing? And what I love is I try to find tips and tricks that don't cost you any money. You just have to implement. And so um, we're going to go to the next slide. The first one is that I wanna look at music, but I wanna look at music from two different perspectives, okay? One is the ability of music to help with our thoughts, our moods and thinking right. And I think we can all recognize the power of music. I want you to think for a minute what movies would be like without a soundtrack. Can you imagine Jaws if it didn't have the dun, 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 you know? It wouldn't get all that adrenaline and emotion before the shark, shark attack. What are some movies that you've seen that would be a total flop without their soundtrack playing in the background? <laughs> That's what came to my mind, Kay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, let's. See. I'm not seeing any answers coming in here, guys. Chariots of Fire. Yep, Chariots of Fire would be a good one. Yep. Welcome, everybody. Getting a lot of interaction and feedback here. Really Star neat. Star Wars. Yeah, really neat comment from uh, Rill a little bit ago. I'm going to read this, Kay. Okay. I have. Real says, I have pretty much stopped making those um, ex real excuses since enrolling in EBS and starting my business. Congratulations, <laughs> Real. That's fantastic. Awesome. Yeah, we're getting some good ones. Dirty Dancing, Sound of Music. <clears throat> I mean, you can, if you think about it, and, and if you haven't ever really paid attention, try muting a movie and just sit there and watch it without the background music. The ability of music to connect with our emotion and, and stimulate a reaction is powerful. And these movie writers know that, which is why they spend so much money on getting people to write a good soundtrack. Now, years ago in my old life, when I worked in the independent bookstore industry, I met and heard a man speak by the name of Dr. Michael Ballum. He's a professor of vocal music, music at Utah State University. And after listening to him speak, I became much more aware of how different types of music affected me. I started paying attention. Are you aware of the different responses your body has to different music? Have you ever noticed, have you ever paid attention and noticed um, how you react to different songs? Sometimes it's a memory. You know, a song will come on that I remember came out when I was in high school, and it takes me right back to where I was in high school when I heard that. Um, but it's something I want you to start paying attention to. All right, let's go to the next one, Kurt. Dr. Ballum recommended that you create what he called a musical first aid kit. Now, when my mom had knee replacement surgery several years ago, I stayed with her in the hospital during the afternoon and all night so that my dad could go home to sleep. I created a musical first aid kit for my mom, which was basically just a playlist on my iPhone of songs I knew she would like and would help her relax. I played it softly in the room as background music all the time. Her door was always closed so it didn't disturb anyone else and it wasn't too loud that she couldn't sleep or we could, it would inhibit us from having any kind of conversation. It was amazing how many nurses, when they came into her room, remarked how great her room felt. 
and they just wanted to stay in there with us. They didn't want to go out and go into anyone else's room. They said, what is going on in here? Why does this room feel different? And I just had that music playing all the time. It was just in the background. Um, let's go to the next one. So this is a personal story when I worked from in the bookstore, uh, worked from the bookstore in Kensington, Maryland many years ago. I discovered that this particular CD, There Is Hope, really distresses me. I can't point to any particular song, but it is amazing how I can feel my whole body relax and de-stress as I listen to this CD. At the time, I managed four bookstores, and one was in Kensington, Maryland, one was in Houston, Texas, Chicago, Illinois, and Atlanta, Georgia. And I had a manager at each store. A friend of mine and another member of our community, Michelle Mabius, was the manager of the Kensington store. Now, I'm embarrassed to tell you because I'm teaching you about mindset, but I'm embarrassed to tell you the rest of the story, but I'm human like everybody else. Anyway, one day I came into work and I was really out of sorts. I was angry. I was upset. I don't even know what I was angry or upset about. I just know that I was and I wanted to stay that way. So you ever have one of those days <laughs> where you're just not very nice person? <laughs> well, Michelle needed to talk to me about some business stuff, but she was afraid to come in my office because I was in one foul mood. But being a close friend, she knew the effect of this CD had on me. So in the outer office, she put that CD on very low so I wouldn't necessarily notice it. And at, because we always played music in the store anyway, so there was always kind of music playing. Well, I was working and trying to stay mad and I could just feel my body start to relax. And it really caught me off guard because I was actually working really hard to stay mad. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to be upset. And it wasn't long before this conflict in me, my body wanted to relax and my mind wanted to stay mad. And I had to, I said, what is going on? So I stopped a minute to kind of focus on what, why this was happening. And I heard that CD playing in the outer office and I just started laughing. So talk about an instant de-stressor, laughter is awesome. Yeah. Anyway, have you ever noticed how hard it is to stay angry or mad when you start laughing? I noticed that with my son, he'll come up and be in a foul mood. And he's so funny just the way he words things. So as he's talking and, and upset about something, I just start laughing out loud. And he never gets mad at me. He ends up laughing with me. And now whatever it was that was bugging him is no longer an issue anymore. Anyway, after I realized what was playing in the outer room and started laughing, I went out to see what Michelle wanted. She said she really needed to talk to me and didn't know what else to do. So she put on the CD to see if it would help me chill out. And it did. This CD is a very powerful CD for me. It works really, really well. And now let's go to the next slide. I wouldn't want to meet you angry in an office, Kay. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> that, wasn't, that wasn't one of my better days. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you another story. And while I did that, if any song popped into your head that has a positive effect on you, I want you to put that song, tell us what it is. Share this is the start of your musical first aid kit, but it also might motivate other people and give other people ideas of things that they could put in theirs. But I got to tell you something with laughter and how when I was little, my mom used to use, I, I don't know what made her think of it. I guess it's just kind of a thing that moms do, but I'm the oldest, oldest of six girls. And my closest sister in age, Susan, is only 18 months younger. And like two girls, we used to fight. I, probably not an uncommon thing well whenever Susan and I would start fighting my mom would make us stand on opposite sides of the room and face each other no talking no fighting we just had to stare at each other so of course we would make faces at the other one to see who could make the other one laugh first and before long we both just burst out laughing and when my mom heard the laughing our punishment was over it usually didn't take us very long and we were too young to didn't even occur to us not to do what my mom told us to do and stare at each other. <laughs> I mean, we could have turned around and faced the wall and not looked at each other, but we didn't. My mom said, you face each other and stare at each other. And that's what we did. So do we have some um, songs? He raises me up. Good one. Good one. Oh, what a wonderful world. Good. Jefferson starts nothing going to stop us now. Good. These are some great ideas. And as people share more ideas of songs that they find motivating, and sometimes it depends on the mood you're in. I like songs that have a much more upbeat 
rhythm to them if I'm cleaning the house and I want to keep a, like I hate cleaning the house. So if I want to stay positive while cleaning the house, I usually tend to pick more upbeat stuff. Um, so a lot depends on what the purpose of the music is for. When I was playing it for my mom, it was to help her relax. So I didn't want anything really jazzy. I wanted more calming kind of music. And so you can make multiple lit playlists or first aid kits depending on what the purpose of that group of songs is. So keep sharing your songs because this can help other people figure out things that will help make that um, a good, <clears throat> you know, thing. All right, hey, let's go to the next one. Okay, if you ever want to see me cry, just play Somewhere Over the Rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to remember that and do it at an event. <laughs> okay, the second way I want to talk about, uh, or want to consider music, is what Dr. Ballum discussed a lot in a presentation he called Music in the Mind. It's music's ability to help us learn. And being a part of the e-commerce business school, we're always learning and growing, and I'm all for anything that will help with that. Did you know that it's a fact that one of the only activities that activates, stimulates, and uses the entire brain is music? When you're doing math, you're on the logical side. When you're drawing pictures, you're on the creative side. But when you're listening, singing, participating with music, it engages the entire brain. Music, most music, has some kind of order which is going to relate to the logical side and yet it invigorates emotions and visions and visuals that engage the other side of the brain um, so let's go to th the next slide I read a really fun article in Reader's Digest when I was doing some research for this um, presentation today and it was 10 wondrous things that can happen to your body when you listen to classical music and that was one of the things that Dr. Ballum noticed that music is not always equal and there is something about classical music. Now, some of you may not be fans of classical music. I wasn't originally. I very much am now. And, um, and I use it. Um, so these are just two of the 10 ways that this article talked about. In, um, and I put a link at the bottom of this slide. So if you want to go see what the other eight are, you can go look at that. In the Brain Power Boost, they talked about in 2001, subjects who listened to Mozart's Sonata for just 10 minutes displayed an IQ score that was nearly 10 points higher after the study than before the study. Research explained that classical music is believed to enhance the, oh, that's supposed to be brain's reasoning or the cognitive understanding of how items or pieces can fit into space. They call it the Mozart effect. And while you may think, and while some think it's controversial, it still can't hurt to switch on a little Baroque music during your day. Dr. Ballum called this formatting the brain. The order of classical music helps your brain to reformat and get, you know, it's like when you refresh your computer, it kind of reorganizes and gets all the data in a better place so that it can run more efficiently. Classical music does the same thing to our brain. The second thing is memory. In a study published in Learning and Individual Differences, one group of students listened to a one-hour lecture where classical music was played in the background, and the other group heard the lecture with no music. Those in the first group scored significantly higher on a quiz than the second group. Now, we teach a lot of stuff in the e-commerce business school, and um, nothing that we teach is hard, but there's a lot to it. There's a lot you have to learn. There's a lot, little things that you have to learn and remember. How many wouldn't want their memory to be <laughs> a little bit better as they're reading and watching the videos trying to learn how to do something, you know? Well, research believe that the music made students more receptive to the information, allowing them to store and recall it more efficiently. Again, it goes to this formatting of the brain that classical music has a tend to do. Next slide. Dr. Ballum discusses the mechanics of why classical music, particularly from the Baroque period, and specifically Handel's water music, aids in comprehension and retention. He says that classical music is so ordered and structured that it helps to reformat the brain and can help us learn and retain what we learn better. Now, if you start listening to classical music or even Handel's water music, and you find that it 
you don't like it, it may be because it's trying to reformat your brain and that's foreign to you. It may be that it's trying to restructure to help you learn better and it's change. And so you may not like it. Um, I will just tell you that I listen to Handel's water music and other classical music the entire time I put this presentation together. Um, so it's real, it was really kind of fun. So we were going to try to play it for you so you could hear it, but we couldn't make that function work. So you can just go out to YouTube, search on Handel's water music, and you'll be able to hear it. Um, so again, it doesn't, you don't have to buy anything or whatever. You can just pull it up on YouTube and listen to it. Now let's give, me, give you my next little tip. Let's go to the next one. And Kay, I did put that yeah. long link in the comment section so people could have okay. that. And I'm, on, right, so I'm yeah, on the slide with the picture of the drop in the water now. Yeah, okay. So I want to talk here a little bit about the power of our thoughts and words on water. And you're going to see how this is so cool <laughs> when I discovered this. Let's go to the next slide. Dr. Emoto photographed water crystals that were exposed to different words, thoughts, and emotions. And it was amazing. So he would take distilled water and then he would expose it to different words, different emotions, and then he would freeze it and take pictures of the crystals. And if you go to the next slide, Kurt, and click on the middle of the screen. It should bring up a YouTube. This one you don't have to hear. So hopefully the um, YouTube will play and you could just hit it and play it and let me know if it's going. You know what? I don't think it's gonna work, Kay, because it's wanting me to access my account and I'm not sure what's gonna happen there. So I apologize for that technical glitch on my end. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is give you the link. Let me look that up real quick, Kurt, and then I can um, give that to you and you can put it in the panel. Okay. This is really a great video, YouTube, to watch. Um, uh, you're going to be amazed. When I, when I, every time I watch it, it just blows me away. And um, let's see. Okay, I could bring it up in my browser and bring the browser over if you'd like me okay, to attempt Okay, yeah, why don't that. you do that, it, Kurt? Right. It's, it's worth watching if we can do that. All right, hang Let on. Let me find you the link real quick here. I'll see if I can get that done. Okay. Uh, so hang with us. We're still figuring out a lot of this technical stuff. Um, Are you sending it through Skype, Kay? Okay. All right, let's see. Get it? And Skype. Here it comes. All right. Now I'm going to go over to Skype. It's amazing how electrons work. All right. Let me grab that. I should have put on Handel's water music for you and had your brain reformatted. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of people that think I'm well, I'm, I'm, I'm overdue. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hang on. Okay. I think it's going to work. I'm also going to shut off my microphone and I think the sound will come through easier that way. Okay. You can sound fine if you don't, it doesn't matter. Oh, this okay. This one doesn't matter with the sound. All right. There we go then. Okay. Let me play. And there we go. Look at how beautiful those crystals are.
That's kind of scary. <laughs> Okay. okay, rice experiments. So we can go back to the slide deck. Actually, maybe the this should be called the consciousness experiment. Just a second, Kay. The next video auto played. Okay, I'm on the slide that says if thoughts can do that to water, imagine what thoughts right. can do to there us. So let's get the slide deck back. Okay, we're good. All right. Wasn't that incredible? If you think about it, considering that we're up to 60% water, and that's what thoughts and emotions do to water. How much more important is, a, is it for us to get control of our thoughts? Because so much of our body is water. Okay? So, next slide, Kurt. What if we could infuse our personal water with positive words before it enters our body? How do you think we could do that? Let's get some answers going here. What if we could infuse our personal water with positive words before it enters our body? How can you do that? I'm not seeing any answers, Ken. I'm stumped no, too. Either. I'm stumped. It's a okay. great question. Go to the next slide. <laughs> ah. Okay. As soon as I see the slide come up, then I'll... All of those... You're starting to get bless the water music forever. This is a simple thing to do. So the image on the right... We live in, we have a well and so we have a holding tank in our house so as the water comes from the earth into our house it goes into this blue tank and i've just taped pasted post-it notes that say thank you and love on it those are ones that register almost the highest vibration and i put that on my cup now it's not hard to do it's really easy you can put it on a pitcher you know all of these things that you're saying pray over it mute expose it to music all of those things are all things that we can do to infuse our water with positive vibrations before we even take it into our system, in addition to the water that's already in our system having it be positive because of the way we think. All right, so let's go to the next one. So there's three simple things that we can do. This is um, to help get more control on our thoughts that we've talked about today. One of them is to create a personal musical first aid kit. And you can just um, 
you know, again, you can make multiple playlists um, for different activities, depending on what it is that you're trying to do. Number two, try listening to some classical music, even Handel's water music regularly. You don't have to listen to it all the time. That one um, study they did, they only listened to it for 10 minutes. It's just like you reboot your system. You don't have to do it every time you sit down at the computer, but you should do it regularly. So if you have a period of time where you're regularly listening to classical music, if you are reading and studying something, it doesn't hurt to have it play in the background. Um, the third is to put positive words such as joy, love, gratitude, abundance, success, peace, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, on water bottles or glasses that you drink from, water pitchers in your fridge, water heaters, water pipes in your house, anywhere that gets exposed. It's amazing that energy travels from a piece of paper into the water. Now let's go to the next slide. I probably have some doubters. <laughs> Does this really work? Some people, are you skeptical? Some people doubt, but that's just, to me, that's just negativity rearing its ugly head. Others, including me, believe it works. And maybe it's the fact that we believe that makes it work. I don't really know, and I really don't care. But what does it hurt to try any of these ideas? None of them costs you a penny. And if you add some positive belief to it, who knows what can happen? Are you willing to give it a try? On the refrigerator is a good one too. <laughs> um, so but let's go to the final quote for me and then I'll turn it over to Kurt. I'll wait for the slide to come up. <clears throat> it is up and, I mean, and Kay with the boat there and the beautiful background. Okay, an entire sea of water <clears throat> cannot sink a boat unless it gets inside the boat. Similarly, the negativity of the world cannot put you down unless you let it, allow it to get inside you. So I wanted to end with water because we started with water, we did a lot with water today. I hope you'll take some of these easy ideas and just start doing it. It's simple, it's easy, it doesn't cost you anything and it won't hurt you and who knows what it could do to help you. So have a great week and back to you, Kurt. Awesome. Thank you, Kay. Hey, give Kay some kudos here, some takeaways, some appreciation there for sharing all that with us. Really, really a lot of cool things to consider. My wife is just going to be so happy. She takes our granddaughter. We moved to Florida to be with our youngest granddaughter and family, and she puts on classical music and rocks her to sleep for her mid-morning nap. And so I'll awesome. be I'll be <laughs> glad to tell her she's multi-purposing there, multitasking. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And it's going to be really interesting when we do get to Minnesota and we see all of the water jugs now with little notes tapped to them. <laughs> <laughs> At the event coming up in Minnesota in July, bring your favorite water container and uh, put whatever on there and a little note say, thank you, Kay, for that. We are going to be in Minnesota. That's what this is all about. We're awarding prizes along the way for those that want to race to Minnesota. If you can't make it, we feel bad for you. But having said that, you can still participate in all this contest uh, stuff today. And again, congratulations to Candida for her award today. Now, Kay, is the first consistency going to be the next? Next week or is it one more week next after week. that? Next week, next all right. Week for its consistency. So yeah. are are there two then awards next week then? Or yes, we okay. We always do a weekly. Okay. And then we'll do the consistency too. Okay, all right. And so guys, this little URL there is on there. So if you're wondering about Minnesota and all that, go ahead and click that link. You can also ask, request to talk to one of our business advisors. Um, so a lot of you have a ticket for one day and haven't let us know whether you're coming to that one day or all days yet. We really want to hear from you. And so it's just going to be an incredible event. We've got, you know, we've done dozens of events and, and truly we get we, we ask for feedback after every event and we improve because of that feedback. It's not that they're perfect, but almost always we get nines and tens total. Just, just everybody's just so thrilled that they came and it was worth their effort. And so we hope that you do race to Minnesota and show up with us. Here we are. We've got um, <clears throat> the uh, July we usually just greet informally the night before. Uh, the 19th Friday is Shop Your Way to Wealth, one-day workshop. It's basically three one-day workshops back-to-back. -back. Saturday is a one-day workshop, online shopping profit system. By the way, pay attention. 
tomorrow. If you don't own online shopping profit system yet, pay attention tomorrow and some of the next few days. Brian Cummings is going to be sharing a lot with us about that particular program over the next few days. And then <clears throat> the book flipping profit system is on Sunday. So we really hope that you can make it. And again, I could read awesome testimonies all day long about our events, but we went a little bit long today, so I'm not going to do that. We just hope that you're able to come and race to Minnesota with us. So again, Kay, thank you. Let me see if there's any last minute comments or questions that we can address here before we move on. Um, all right, <laughs> the water is wide. Thank you, Real. You're welcome. All right, good. Okay, hey, Kay, thanks again, and we'll be here. Same time, same station for the Curtis and Curtis Show from the e-commerce business school next. Right. Next Wednesday. Wednesday, goodbye everybody, have a great week. Bye-bye.